For years, the idea of starship on the moon sounded bored, in inevitable, but never quite certain. The vehicle meant to carry humanity back to the lunar surface has faced delays, redesigns, and relentless pressure. But what if SpaceX has been shaping a solution hidden in plain sight? What if the company plans to combine the raw power of Starship with the proven reliability of Dragon, the spacecraft that has already delivered crews, cargo, and life-saving support in Earth orbit? This isn't wild speculation anymore. It's a direction SpaceX may realistically take to secure its place in Artemis, i.e and possibly touch the lunar surface before any competitor, including China or Blue Origin. Because right now, Starship's role in Artemis has never been under more scrutiny. New proposals, shifting timelines, and rising alternatives have forced SpaceX to rethink how fast it can move and how much risk NASA is willing to accept. Supporters have floated ideas like simplified mission profiles or shorter Starship variants, but none fully solves the schedule pressure or the complexity of massive in-orbit refueling. That's where this new concept changes everything. The Starship plus Dragon combination could allow SpaceX to rely entirely on its own hardware, launch crews more safely, cut down mission complexity and push development timers forward. Dragon is already battle-tested, Starship is rapidly evolving, together they could form a complete Earth-to-Moon and back system far sooner than expected. But would this actually work? What problems does it solve? And what new risks does it introduce? And if SpaceX really pursues this path, what would it take to make the first crewed lunar Starship mission a reality? Those questions lead us into one of the most intriguing mission architects SpaceX has ever been linked to. So the real question is, could this be the strategy that gets SpaceX to the moon first and does it give them a real advantage over every other contender? Once you lay out this combined Starship Dragon concept, its biggest strength becomes obvious. It keeps the entire mission inside a spacey ecosystem, no Orion docking, no dependency on assless schedules, no waiting for another spacecraft to reach the righty controls. Updates and launches at its own pace. And that matters right now more than ever, Artemis is under pressure. NASA is watching its time shift, critics are questioning readiness, and inside the industry, Blue Origin is positioning itself as a credible backup. SpaceX knows that if it wants to stay in the lead, it must show a path that feels achievable, not someday, but soon. That's where the Dragon pairing suddenly becomes more than a creative proposal. It becomes a realistic shortcut. Dragon has a track record that every space engineer respects, flawless cargo missions, successful rescues, and multiple safe crew deliveries to the east. It has endured abort tests, re-entries, and years of real-world operations. And space knows it. Under this new architecture, Dragon carries the astronauts to low Earth orbit, where conditions are calm, communication is strong, and emergency response is possible. The crew transfers to Starship there, not hundreds of thousands of miles away in lunar orbit, where help would be days too far. That shift alone reduces mission risk and gives NASA something it desperately needs right now, confidence. Meanwhile, Starship HLL focuses on what it does best, massive payload capacity, powerful propulsion, and the ability to serve as a full point-to-point -point spacecraft between Earth orbit and the lunar surface. No detours, no extra rendezvous, no handoffs to another vehicle, just a direct journey to the moon and back. But to make that happen, SpaceX still needs a dependable refueling chain. The video's original concept describes one or two orbital depots, each filled by about five Starship tankers. One depot would stay in Earth orbit, the other could be sent to lunar orbit to support the return trip. If only a single depot is built, it would travel to lunar orbit and Starship HLS would be refueled in Earth orbit directly from tankers before leaving for the moon. This is where the technical challenges stack up fast. Moving a depot from Earth orbit to lunar orbit isn't simple. It needs a propulsion module strong enough to handle the trip, reliable enough to run for weeks, and efficient enough to conserve fuel. Uh, SpaceX is testing components for that system solar arrays, power distribution modules, and tank insulation. Boulong duration, cryogenic storage, is still one of the hardest problems in modern aerospace. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen don't behave nicely when exposed to deep space for months. Before any crew trusts this architecture, the depot must survive long-term heating from the sun, sudden cold from shadowed regions, micrometeoroid impacts, and continuous pressure loads on its tanks. And because the depot becomes a lifeline for the returning crew, failure is not an option. The next challenge is even more controversial. Refueling Starship HLS in lunar orbit. 
With the crew on board, NASA has always treated fuel transfer with astronauts present as a high-risk operation, even in Earth orbit. Doing it nearly 250,000 miles away with no possibility of rescue raises questions that SpaceX will have to answer with flawless engineering and repeated demonstrations. Yet the benefits if SpaceX succeeds could be enormous. Starship HLS would no longer be a one-use shuttle waiting for Orion. It would become a full-cycle spacecraft, receiving crew in Earth orbit, landing on the moon, lifting off again, refueling and bringing astronauts home to meet Dragon for re-entry. It unlocks a future where moon landings could happen more frequently, driven not by government budgets, but by how fast SpaceX can build ships and refuel depots. For SpaceX supporters, this idea feels like the company stepping into its true identity, fast, independent and relentlessly engineering focused. For competitors, it's a reminder that SpaceX is willing to rebuild entire mission Arcactus when Tynan. Of course, even this bold approach depends on something fundamental. Starship itself must mature. The V3 version is expected to be the backbone of tankers, depots and the lunar lander. Its performance in upcoming flights will determine almost everything, stability during ascent, reliability of its heat shield and precision during controlled landings. Starship must reach stable width can see stay. It must demonstrate safe, robust two-stage landing profiles. Each milestone supports a part of the lunar mission, and none of them can slip too far into the future if the goal is to compete with China or maintain NASA's trust. That's why SpaceX is scaling up production. They need more prototypes, faster, more flight tests closer together. More launch pads, more recovery assets, and more infrastructure at both Starbase and Cape Canaveral. The pace that brought Falcon 9 to life must be double, maybe triple. Juno brings Starship to lunar readiness. Meanwhile, the world's waiting for something else too. The public reveal of the updated Starship HL's design. NASA wants to see the interior layout, life support systems, ladder or elevator solutions, landing leg uprose, and hazard mitigation strategies for the tall vehicle. Space A has kept much of that quiet, but eventually they'll need to show exactly how astronauts will live, work, and move inside the world's tallest lander. Only then will NASA, the public, and the astronauts themselves fully understand how this combined architecture fits into the next chapter of lunar exploration. And that brings us back to the heart of the idea. Does this Starship Dragon partnership truly give SpaceX a faster, safer, more controllable path to the moon? Or does it introduce new layers of complexity that could slow everything down? Either way, we're entering the most intense phase of Starship's development. Where ambition meets deadlines and every test flight carries the weight of a future lunar landing. As Starship moves toward its next milestones, one thing is becoming clear. This potential pairing with Dragon isn't just a backup plan. This is a bold attempt to accelerate a dream that has been decades in the making. Dragon brings reliability, Starship brings reach. Together, they could redefine how fast humans return to the lunar surface and how far future missions can go. But the path ahead is still full of unanswered questions. Can SpaceX prove that its depots can survive the deep space environment? Will NASA accept refueling with crewmen in lunar orbit? And will Starship's upgrades arrive in time to stay ahead of rising competitors? The answers will shape not only Artemisi, if you want to follow every breakthrough, every test flight, and every twist in SpaceX's journey, make sure you like this video, share it, and drop your thoughts in the comments. Your perspective always pushes the conversation forward. And don't forget to subscribe to Atlas Space so you never miss the next chapter in this unfolding story. The moon is calling again, and the race to reach it is only getting more intense.